Not everything in the world can be represented by integers, and you might have noticed that it's been a while since we've talked about the double type. Well, we're coming back to that here in this video, and we're talking about floating point numbers. So double is a style of number, it's called floating point. What that means is that the number of bits that are used above the decimal point, or in this case the binary point, and the number that are below the binary point changes. Okay, so that the, basically, it's like having a, a decimal point number where you can have more numbers above or below the, uh, the decimal point. You can also represent numbers using fixed point. That is something that has been done at, at many times and it's been, it can help on certain specialized hardware, but it's not how the majority of computers do things today. Now, we're not going to go into the details of how floating point numbers are set up in the computer or into the the you know exact specification the IEEE specification that that's used for storing them however there are things that are critical for you to realize about these numbers and we can illustrate them by a little bit of math here so 1 minus 0.9 minus 0.1 that value, according to mathematicians, should be zero. But as you can see, it doesn't come out to be zero. And the reason is because doubles are not real numbers. They're not exact. And to help you understand this, think of the fraction one-third. Not the Scala fraction, because one divided by three and Scala is zero, but one-third. And when you write it as a decimal number, what does it come out as? Well, it's 0.3333. And then if you're in a math class, you either use a bar or some dot, dot, dots to indicate this goes on forever. But we don't have forever. Okay, we're storing this in a fixed size. In the case of a double, we have 64 bits. Uh, the double has a relative called a float, which we can create by putting an F after the number, and that will give us a float. The float only uses 32 bits. Okay? That's as much space as we have to represent these numbers. So imagine that I only had five digits to represent my number and I wanted to represent one-third well then this is what I'd get it's not exactly one-third it's fairly close but it's not exact and of course then two-thirds would be represented by some other repeating decimal and it's possible that when I add the two together I don't actually get a value equal to to one, or possibly, actually the better one would be two thirds, which would probably come out to, if I had five digits, that, minus one third, minus that. Because we'd round up on one and we'd round down on the other two, and of course you can just look at that and know that the answer is not going to be zero. Of course, the answer would have been 10 to the minus five, but it's not even quite that because the doubles, once again, aren't exactly accurate. What's happening here is that if you try to calculate the value of 0.1 in binary, like the fraction one third in decimal, it's an infinite repeating value. So in other words, in order to accurately represent 0.1, you need an infinite number of bits. We don't have an infinite number of bits, so that 0.1 gets cut off. Turns out the 0.9 also gets cut off. The whole numbered one is represented perfectly, but those other two have small errors in them. And so when we do this subtraction, we get a number that is really, really close to zero. Now this is scientific notation here. This says times 10 to the negative 17. And that's a really, really tiny number. So this is remarkably close to zero, but it's not exactly zero. If we were to repeat that same thing with floating point numbers, we'd get a number that is significantly bigger. Uh, it turns out it's roughly equal to, it's on the right order of the square root because we have half as many bits. And so instead of being 10 to the minus 17, we have 10 to the minus eight, which is significantly larger. I and mean, we're talking about nine orders of magnitude here, but still 10 to the minus eight is a really small number. So this is still very close to zero. That's what you need to know. And the reason you need to know it is that if I had two different values, we'll call them X and Y, and I wanted to check if they are the same, you should never do that with doubles. 
Okay, you should never do a direct comparison between two doubles because there are small errors. Okay, instead, what you do is you take the difference between them and see if that difference is less than some small value. Okay. The other thing that you should know about doubles, and this can be very helpful to you, is that there is an object called math that has a bunch of little functions in it. So I hit tab to do the tab completion. It has values like math.pi as well as e, the base of the natural algorithms. It also has things like a square root function as well as a cubed root function, trigonometric functions like sine and cosine, uh, maximum, minimum, floor, rounding. Uh, if you want to round, this is one way to do it. You can also get random numbers. I'll use that function occasionally, and of course it gives you a different number every time you call it. So lots of helpful little math functions uh, exist inside of the math object and you can call them and uh, basically give yourself a more complete calculator in Scala with the knowledge that you're working in floating point arithmetic and so there are some places where the fact that it is not perfectly accurate is going to cause there to be interesting results.